20th anniversary of OK Computer, and there is a new uh, uh, album about to come out called OK Not OK, a 20th anniversary remastering uh, with extra songs. I promised Man War and Lift. There's in the uh, full package, as you will hear, there's lots of other stuff as well. Uh, Man War was on Sean's show. Lamo will have Lift later on. It was produced by Nigel Godrich, who is quite often reckoned by, not least by the band themselves, to have been a major influence on the sound of it. So I started by asking Nigel how him involved he was in this new reissue. Beyond just getting together all the original, you know, analogue versions yeah. of the original tracks that we then remastered to sort of uh, bring it up to date, technically, we had to think about how to make it interesting and what was what existed that would be interesting for mm. people to hear. And of course, all this time there have been these songs, you know, recorded that we that I knew about, we all knew about. Um, I promise, you know, I mean, it could have been on the record, and uh, and Lift was at the time supposedly going to be the first single you know wow so the only reason it wasn't on the album is it never really it was it was it was a bit like we had these songs that we knew were so important that the, the pressure f to record those was too much and it just kind of kept falling apart you know? yeah so uh so funnily enough you know the fact that that version of lift for example is the one on the record should be the one that that gets heard is is kind of hilarious to me and you know Mildly <laughs> irritating in a weird way because, uh, of course, it sort of, in, in some respects, represents a failure on my part. Oh, really? But um, it yeah. was one of the things that, for probably the for one of the first things we recorded for when we started the album proper. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, Lift and Man of War, we did a weekend right. over my 25th birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, you know, it's a great, dare I say it for a plug, it is a great package in as much yeah. as. The cassette has, you know, demos of uh, Tom's full track demos, which are spectacular. I mean, they're just beautiful things of songs that didn't even make it, you know, and uh, or songs that did make it. Like his his full track of Let Down is, yeah, oh, you know, I love it. So there's all that stuff, and then also I trawled through all the tapes. It sort of made me realise that when we if we if we ever do anything like this for like Kid A, for example. Mm. There's going to be, there's so much material, you know, because we spent so much time and we did so much recording. This, however, I was, I literally had 20 multi-track tapes that I used to record over, you know, if we, did, if we didn't like a take, you know, I'd go over it. So there was only so much stuff that uh, yeah. survived. Yeah. The, the other thing as well that you got, got to, you will see is all of the artwork because they were making you know dan and tom were working on the artwork all the time whilst we were recording in the corner yeah and they were incredibly prolific you know and did all this amazing stuff and uh what has been fun for them i know is just going back and looking at all their notebooks and digging up the stuff that didn't make it to the final thing it's that stuff you know it takes you into yeah. that into that mindset it's very cool so let's go right back so your relationship with the man started with the bends didn't it yeah, I mean, basically, I worked at the studio where they, where, where the, most of the bends was recorded. I was a in-house engineer, so you know, in the in the, in those days, if you wanted to become a record producer, the best thing that you could do is get a job in a studio. Yeah, you just come across all these people and meet these, you know, make uh, meet people who are doing the same things, the same age as you. You know, I mean, in this case, anyway, and a very very wonderful, lovely, talented producer called John Leckie. He was the, he was the man in charge and made that record and then when he was away leaving us to do b-sides basically we yeah. sort of uh I, I was very ambitious they were very ambitious i think we all sort of realized that we could um do something a little bit more untoward outside of the box as it were yeah and uh very very happy to say that you know a, about a year later you know i um saw tom after a show on that Ben's tour in the forum in Kennish Town, Tanner Country Club at the time. And uh, he said, oh, we were going to call you because we wanted you to record us in our rehearsal room. Because right. they, they, I think the thing was they just hadn't really enjoyed being in the studio before. I think the first album was quite stressful to make. Yeah. And then they had an awful lot of pressure because if Creep hadn't been... The Creep was released, I think, twice or three times mm -hmm. even in England. If it hadn't been picked up in the states they might have been dropped yeah. you know i mean it, it, it's one of those things so after that they were under a lot of pressure when we we're making the bends to come up with another big hit yeah which was just not the the mindset that's just not where they were you know it just wasn't what 
I don't think the kind of songs that Tom was writing and he knew that and didn't want to do that again. Yeah, because I think I've read you said Parlophone gave him quite a bit of money and you spent it on some kit, didn't you, and went off to the Oxfordshire... Well, it starts in a different place than where it ends up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I mean, this is a... They had rented an old sort of Apple store, which was right. like a sort of... in the, An isolated farm that they could uh, rehearse in. And I just sort of went along with Chris Hufford, their manager, and said, OK, this is what I would buy with this money that you've got. Yeah. It was very, very liberating and very exciting. And, uh, you know, it was it was very much a sort of... Uh, very sort of intimate experience really it was mm. just us just being given the keys to the to the rolls royce as it yeah. were and off we went and then then after doing that for a while i mean we were basically working in this sort of you know an empty container unit right we didn't even have a toilet right so uh after we made some progress it was clear it was working but we just needed to change it up a little bit so that's when we 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 had a little look around and i think uh, the people who had sold us the gear had, had worked at this place in Catherine's court just outside of bath it was jane seymour's jane seymour's place jane seymour's home but it was this incredible kind of elizabethan manor that had a big ballroom wow and the cure had worked there and it worked fine yeah. so so uh, but actually they'd done they'd gone to all sorts of trouble and built like a room within a room in the control in the control room and all this stuff and i just sort of thought let's just shove the desk in the middle of the room and we're sitting in a library in this incredible place yeah because that's the other thing is like it it's technically you're not supposed to do that you know it's supposed to you know recording studios are all very kind of snooty about how they sound and they're you know the, the sonic yeah things of a room you know how a control room should sound and I've, I've never really sort of uh i don't know it's just never really bothered me i can work anywhere and yeah. i love working in weird spaces i mean i think the weirder the space the better you get you get the energy of where you are and if you're in a recording studio you're just somewhere where somebody else has done that thing before mm. you you know you're 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 breathing you're breathing there yeah dead skin through the air conditioning you know what i mean versus yeah. like going somewhere really incredible which you look out the windows and it's just this rolling countryside and horses and this it just it was you know it was a magic place you know yeah were you listening to much music in in your downtime because i've read these comments from tom about listening to you know uh bitches brew and penderechki so were you, were you listening to music as well yeah i mean actually um the thing that i remember when the first time that we actually that i went to the first day of recording in the fruit farm yeah i was on the way and I drove past Scott Walker on his bicycle. Wow! <laughs> and you see, nobody would know it was Scott Walker. I only know it was Scott Walker because I'd worked with him like a few months before as an assistant, you know, wow. just in a session. And he does this thing where he hides himself, you know, he puts a cap on, yeah. and sunglasses, and he's on his bike, you know. He lives yeah. in Chiswick, or he did. Yeah. And I drove past him, and I got to the studio, and Tom was there holding Scott Four and Pet Sounds. Wow. And I said, oh, you're never, you're never a good omen. <laughs> Yeah. I just drove past Scott. The band have always been very big on saying how big a part of the record you were. Do you remember it like that being something where you had a kind of creative input that maybe sometimes producers don't? I think that I'm actually quite fortunate, really, because I get credited a lot more than other people who do what I do. OK. But I think uh, I... Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> I made that record. Literally, I made it. Yeah. You know, and it was the band and me in the studio. There was one other person, Peter, who is the the tech guy who, like, you know, helped built, used to build guitar panels for Johnny or built a guitar for Ed or, like, did a lot of work like that. But he was not a studio guy. So, mm. actually, that was the other thing that was fairly ridiculous. If you saw the size of the house and what we had there, yeah. you know, it wasn't like making a record on a laptop, you know. It yeah. was, like, big machinery and a, lots of wire and oh, and, is it, and is it fair to say that okay computers it marks the beginning the arrival of what you might call a nigel godrich sound that then yeah. lots of other people wanted a part of well you know apart from the other thing is apart from you know i got i did one i produced in inverted commas one other record before this mm. uh which was this silver sound silver record, sun, like, yeah. like a power pop thing it yeah was brilliant it was so much fun and i only got that gig off the back of the fact that they knew the label knew that I was going to work with Radiohead, so they sort wow. of trusted me, you know. But you've got to remember that, I guess what I'm saying is that that's the beginning of my career. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of, I've worked on a lot of records as an engineer, but none of them were really successful. I mean, they were not my thing, you know, they were working for a studio, I mean. And then the, the, when I really got to sort of run with what I was doing, that's when everything sort of started to go right, so, you know. OK Not OK, which is the reissue of OK Computer with lots of extra stuff, which are beautiful artefacts, as, uh, as, uh, as Nigel said, is out tomorrow. And um, 
Thanks so much, Nigel. Thank you.